And, or the next thing, which in some ways is even better, clones. These are the, of the food crops you eat, these are the main ones that are clonal. Potatoes, pterosols. Some of you might know these as, uh, I've got to correct your vocabulary in this, I'm sorry, I have to do this. Um, you might know them as either sunchokes or Jerusalem artichoke. Yeah, forget that, erase that from your memory. They are properly called pterosols. And part of the reason is they're not from Jerusalem at all. Jerusalem is a corruption of the Italian word girasol, which means oh. sunflower, turn to the sun. Yeah, got that? Okay. And artichokes, they ain't no connection to artichokes. They're very, very distantly related. Some people think the flavor resembles artichokes. And I, yeah, I, I, I doubt that either. I've never been all that partial to uh, uh, real artichokes, globe artichokes, mainly because one day years ago in my hobo period, I was walking down a county lane in, in Castroville, California, and there were fields of artichokes on both sides, and a duster, a crop duster came in and went right over, paid no attention to whatever, so just spread right over my So ever, ever, ever since, any time I, I, uh, I smell or see uh, artichokes, all I can smell is, is uh, airplane exhaust. So anyway, uh, there are no relation to uh, pterosols. So I w we were trying to come, a friend of mine, we were trying to come up with a proper name for these things that are not sun, and sun choke sounds like something you should be gagging on, right? So I don't like that word. <laughs> so so my, my cousin Tom came and he said, what about pterosols? Terra, earth, sol, sun? And I gotta think about that for a few seconds. Thought about it, that's it, good. And so this is what uh, they're, they're uh, I'm on a campaign to get the word. I use it in my novel, <laughs> we call them only, you gotta figure out what I'm talking about, because I'm only calling them sun choke. I mean, calling pterosols. So henceforth, what are they? Oh, oh, you guys are beautiful. <laughs> Anyone you hear say another word for it correctly? What, what's a type? What is? Oh, those things. Pterosols, you mean? Okay. Um, anyway, they are clonal, like potatoes. You cut them up pieces with an eye on each one. You plant them. Okay. Um, sweet potatoes. Again, they're done. You don't do um, them sexually. You do them asexually. Garlic. Uh, Egyptian onions. Uh, the top set onions. The, the any of the bunching onion types that you don't plant seed of, that you divide or use a top set, they're clonal and shallots. These are all clonal crops. No sex involved in them at all. In fact, in fact, if you want to create a new variety of, let's say, um, Egyptian onion, you can do it. It's rather elaborate. It's a rather tricky thing to do it. You have to, like, well, it's, it's kind of gross. I'm not going to tell you. But um, <laughs> and it's, it's in my book, though. I didn't pull any punches there. Um, but anyway, these are crops that we don't have to worry about them staying pure. The thing you sometimes have to worry about them is because it's the same plant continuing on and on and on, they sometimes accumulate things like systemic viruses that are in the plant. Like potatoes, after a while, they, they can, uh, it's sort of like, it's a little comparable to AIDS in the sense that it's not that easy to get, it takes quite a lot of exposure to get it, but once you get it, it's pretty impossible to get rid of it. So it's really good to try to keep your stock free, disease free. But as far as uh, crossing, no, not a problem. So these are simple to do, yeah. They're, they're How many generations does it take to get to that point? To which point? To the AIDS point. When to get diseased has <coughs> nothing to do with generations. It can happen in one generation, it can happen in centuries. Okay. It's, it has to do with the exposure. And so let's say you've got a variety here that's pure, you've got certified seed source, and you've got another one, some local heirloom that maybe has a disease that it got from somewhere else in it. It might have not even got it from a potato, it might have got it from some wild solanaceae like um, uh, deadly nightshade or you know wild tomato some of those kind of things but if it's got it then it can spread to this the good news about that Darren is it's not spread um, through the soil it's basically spread by the mouth parts of chewing insects mainly mainly flea beetles but also aphids can hopping from one to the other so I have uh, I've been rebuilding my potato collection and from, from pure sources and keeping it in a quarantine plot so if I bring in something else accidentally they won't so as long as you can do that, you have no problem at all. So it's not a case of uh, it's, uh, how much time, how many generations is, is exposure. And uh, exposure, once or twice, you know, they might cross, it, it, again, like AIDS, the aphid may carry it there, but it doesn't take. It's not, it's not guaranteed it's gonna take even when it's exposed. Sometimes you run a bunch of kids with runny nose and stuff, doesn't make, guarantee you're gonna get the flu or whatever, but it's kind of like that.